10 Bizarre Cult Teachings 10. Ritual Hanging in Ancient Greece But we're not talking about hanging to death. We're talking about in ancient Greece the idea of the god Dionysus. A great celebration would come together, celebrating all the gifts they've been given by the great god Dionysus. They would offer fruit and sacrifice of rams and of other creatures and other activities. They would have dances and celebrations. And at one point in the celebrations, on the third day of celebration, women would be brought to hang themselves non-lethally from ropes tied to wooden beams so their bodies swung in the wind. The tradition itself is set in legend relating to Acharus, who was taught the art of winemaking by Dionysus himself. He shared his newfound knowledge with his fellow shepherds who proceeded to get very drunk. Not understanding drunkenness, they believed that Icarus had poisoned them and they proceeded to kill him. His faithful dog led his daughter to his graveside and upon the realization of his death, she hung herself in despair. So this practice, this cult practice of, well, fake hanging is a solemn ceremony to remember the death of the daughter, Irigon. Nine, Raelianism and sex workers. Raelianism was started in the 1970s by a man called Claude, who renamed himself Rael and claimed to be a prophet after a humanoid figure descended from a UFO to tell him that alien scientists created human DNA and were planning on returning soon. Within this new religion of Raelianism, there is a women-only sect called Rael's Girls. This group of women not only celebrates the feminine and open sexuality, but prominently stand in support of those who honour Rael's teaching by bringing pleasure to the world via prostitution or other employment in the sex industry. They encourage women who work in the sex industry to be proud of their occupation. One that brings pleasure and enlightenment to so many people. Eight, inside out universe. You may be familiar with the hollow earth theory, but this idea goes one step further. The alchemist Cyrus T. Reed received a vision from the divine mother telling him that he was in fact the new messiah and that everything he had suspected about cosmology was true. The Divine Mother confirmed that not only was the earth hollow but we are living on the inside of it. So the idea of this inverted view of the universe is that we live in a vast chasm, that the earth is this pocket of air and the inner part of this rock on which life has developed and that the sun and all of the things that we observe in the universe are merely parts of this inner earth and there is no real outer earth where life can exist because we have the inner universe encased in rock of all things. 7. The harrowing Easter Island egg hunt. The Birdman cult of Orongo, Easter Island. Power on the island was long controlled by a warrior class and every year the leaders of this class competed to see who was going to be rewarded with the title of Birdman for the year and enjoy the benefits of being treated like a living god. One such test was each potential warrior leader selected a champion who then descended a sheer cliff face 300 vertical meters into shark infested waters. The Exenstein Stones and Nazi occultism. These Exenstein Stones 
are a massively impressive group of five naturally formed standing stones in northern Germany. Prior to the arrival of Christian monks in the late 7th century, the stones seem to have been used for utilitarian purposes as shelter from the elements. When the monks settled there, they carved the first stairs into the rocks, launching the site on its journey from utilitarian to mystical. The site changed ownership several times before ending up in the hands of the Nazi party head occultist Heinrich Himmler. Himmler was the founder of the Nazi research organisation. The ideas of the Nazi party and their research, their pseudoscience, was to try and support the ancient age of these stones and the connection as a great accomplishment of the so-called Aryan race. They took existing archaeological sites and fabricated the idea of a pro-Nazi mythology using evidence of genuine occurrences and linking it to their alleged racial superiority. This deception transformed a natural occurrence with some history into a symbol of German nationalism. So much so that neo-Nazis gathered the site from time to time in the present day. 5. Pascal Beverly Randolph and Sex Magic As a traveller, Randolph collected a wide range of philosophies, research, studies, secret teachings from a vast number of so-called secret societies. Many of these ideas he compiled into books, one of which outlines perhaps the most important aspect of his belief, the idea of sex magic. The basis of his book, Magia Sexualis, is that the male has a positive charge and the female has a negative charge. And when properly applied to each other, they recharge each other's life force. In his book, he offers guidelines for how to actually operate this kind of magic. In his book, he offers guidelines on how to perform this kind of act correctly. To make this magic work, you're meant to keep the idea of the magic in mind. You're meant to keep the magical goals. The idea of proper hygiene is meant to be that you apply certain substances to your body in order to make it spiritually active so the magic can work. So when you sleep with a woman, if you're a man, you absorb the necessary energy in order to recharge yourself. And unlike some cult practices, this particular idea is meant to be practiced between people who are over the age of 18. 4. The opening of the mouth ritual. Supposedly by making proper ritual to various gods who guard the gates of the afterlife and allow you to carry yourself into a position in the new world. And such ceremonies revolving around the opening of the mouth ritual were very specialised and sacred. In order to be reborn in the afterlife, the body of the deceased must be properly prepared. There must be proper method to ensure that the spirit, the body, goes through to the greater existence. That means opening their eyes and mouth so they can see, so they can breathe. The various images on the walls of various burial chambers represent the processes involved in this particular ritual. First an ox is ritualistically slaughtered and the foreleg is removed. The severed leg is used to touch the mouth and eyes of the dead, opening them and reviving the person for their journey to the afterlife. A funeral meal is prepared and presented to the deceased with a variety of offerings that befit the station, the position in society that they held as part of their earthly life. 3. Cabelli and self-castration Cabelli, the mother of Dionysus in Greece, 
was associated with many festivals, music making and drinking. Young men performed armed war dances to music and traditional songs. Another part of this tradition was self-mutilation to such a level that many worshippers escalated to the point of beating themselves with leather thongs. The most devout of all, who were in a frenzy, ended up castrating themselves amidst the festivals and rituals relating to this particular tradition. These devout followers were priests of an order dedicated to this goddess and their initiation rites and rituals were closely guarded secrets. Some texts suggest that they would mutilate themselves even after castration, that they would continue to harm themselves in dedication to their faith. 2. The Cult of Relics and the Sacred Breast Milk In the modern era we tend to separate religion from capitalism. However, in centuries past, the gap was not so great, and indeed, certain merchants realised the desire for the miraculous. Venetian merchants made the discovery that people are willing to pay good money to own a piece of a person who has lived a holy life. Not long after, they discovered that people would pay just as much for recently manufactured relics. The idea was, by having say a finger bone from a person who was in the Bible, you could actually feel the spiritual power of them. That it bring about a sense of peace, calm, and what can only really be described as saintliness. As a result, the merchants had a roaring trade. Some of the strangest fabricated relics include a lock of Mary's hair and some of her breast milk and a clear vial that contains the breath of Christ. And some sellers even tried to sell people white feathers claiming that they were genuine Archangel feathers from Gabriel or the Archangel Michael. Number one, elevating emperors to godhood. The Romans worshipped their leaders and when they passed, when they died, if they weren't actually nominated to be a god already, they would nominate them to be a god after their passing. The imperial cult was devoted to the worship of dead emperors as gods. Temples were built to honour them, complete with mosaics depicting them as they rise to the heavens to take their rightful place amongst the gods, such as Julius Caesar, who was the first officially to be recognised as divine. This imperial cult itself was as much political as religious. It was about good propaganda, about keeping the focus on Rome and the power of Rome, the history of Rome. It was about ensuring the longevity of the empire through their propaganda. They could use the idea of divine leaders and divine mission carried on by the priesthood all over the empire to ensure loyalty to the faith. In many areas, this cult existed alongside Christianity and alongside other beliefs of different regions. During the reign of Augustus, membership of the imperial cult meant an increase in status. By remaining part of the establishment, the hierarchy, of the empire, you ensured your ascension towards greater power and influence. Not only were landowners and freemen wealthy enough to support the cult, and of course Rome itself, but they were eligible for appointments to the lucrative cult priesthood itself. Not merely by gaining status by their support, but by becoming part of the order, they could become incredibly influential.